Hi, this is Mr. Johns, and we're going to discuss photosynthesis and chemical equation, or MD chemical equation. Photosynthesis chemical formula says you take six carbon dioxide molecules plus six water molecules, and you're going to yield a sugar molecule plus six oxygen molecules, or as you read it, six CO2 molecules plus six H2O molecules yields one sugar molecule, which is C6H12O6, plus six O2s. So let's first look at the CO2. It's asking you for a molecule. This molecule is just this thing with two red, red objects, which is oxygen and one carbon. And it wants six of them. So we do one, two, three, four, five, six molecules. And then it asks for six water molecules. So again, the water molecule looks like we call it Mickey Mouse. It has two hydrogen ears and an oxygen. And it's asking for six of those. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I put these two together with some kind of energy, and that energy comes from the sun, then it's going to give me, or I could produce, a sugar molecule and some oxygen. So the C6H12O6, it's a complicated molecule and it looks like this. As you can see, it has different molecules inside. And then it asks for six oxygen molecules or six O2s. And the oxygen molecule looks like this. So it's just simply just two red, well, two oxygen molecules. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So let's count the atoms to make sure they're balanced. So how do we count atoms? So to count an atom, because if you remember correctly, this is a molecule. We don't want to count the molecule. Again, this section here, is the molecule and we don't want to count the molecule we want to count the atoms the atoms are this right here these little pieces are atoms so this is the oxygen the oxygen and the gray area is going to be the uh, uh, carbon and we want to count just the atoms so I always say start from left to right because that's how we read and so we're going to read the carbon. So we start with the carbon, and we're looking for the elements. And so when we count, we start with from the left to right. So we have carbon, we have oxygen. Then we move over to the hydrogen. And then we keep going to the far right, which is oxygen. But we already have oxygen, so we don't have to do oxygen a second time. So now we're just going to count the carbon. Now remember, the carbon is just this gray area in the middle. These are the carbons, and we're going to count these. And we said there's going to be six molecules, so I'm going to have six of these carbons. And how many carbons in each molecule? Just one. So it's just one. So if you don't see a subscript back here, then it means one. Let's go ahead and talk about what this means again. This six is called a coefficient. So you're going to times the molecule by the coefficient. This number here is called the subscript. So again, we have six carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And we take that six and we put it on our spread on our little paper here. The next step is we're counting the oxygen. And again, remember the oxygen 
says that we're going to have two, this subscript tells us we're going to have two oxygen atoms for every carbon, and I need six of these. So I need six, I need six, which is a coefficient, and that's going to be times by the two. So again, we're going to go through and we're just going to count the atoms. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we're just going to take that twelve and put it where the O is. Now we're going to move to the right, which is going to be the hydrogen. And again, the subscript says there's going to be two. And the coefficient says there's six. And so all we have to do is, if we really want to, just say 6 times 2, which is 12. So let's go ahead and count the atoms. So remember, we're talking about the hydrogen. The hydrogens are the little ears. And everybody has two ears. So if I said somebody has two ears and we have six people, how many ears would that be? And that would be 12. And so let's go ahead and count one more time. So we got 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we take those twelve and we put it down with the hydrogen. Now we're going to look for the oxygen. And it says we have, does it have any type of subscript behind it? So there's no subscript behind it. So if there's no subscript behind it, that means it's a one. So it's kind of like if I said, Bob is in the classroom. How many Bobs are in the classroom? And you'd know there's one. I don't have to say there's one. Well, in this case, we said there's one oxygen or there's an oxygen with the water molecule. And therefore, we don't have to really say there's one. We just know there's one because it says oxygen. If there's more than one, it's going to tell you what the number. So again, all we have to do is we take the six. And we're going to times it by the subscript, which in this case, there's no subscript, which means one, because there's one atom. So we're going to count the, the, the atoms in this set. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to put, so we're going to put six over with the oxygen. And we're going to add those together. So 12 plus six equals 18. So again, all we're doing is we took this 12, which is the red or the oxygen, and we add it on to these six molecules or these, well, atoms on this side, the six oxygen atoms on this side. So 6 plus 12 or 12 plus 6 equals 18. So now we're going to move on to the product side. Remember, this is the reactant side. Reactant says if I put two things together, or if I put things together, it could be more than two things, but if I put things together, I'm going to get my product. So I could say one plus two equals three. And you know, in, in math, we actually use that. We'll say those two variables, 1 plus 2, equals 3. And 3 is the product. So let's go ahead and add these up and see how they, they balance out. So we're now going to look at the product. So the first thing we do is we start with the C. Oh, we have to first going to yield it. So we're going to add some energy. Energy from where? Energy from the sun. And again, we read from the left to right. We're starting with the products. We're going to start with C. But the C, is there any coefficient in front of the C? And there's not a coefficient. So therefore, I know it means there's only one. And again, it goes back to the same idea with the subscript. If there's nothing behind the element, then we know that it's a one atom in that subscript. We don't have to put one down. It's just automatically known. Again, if I said the boy is in the classroom, how many people in the classroom, we can say, well, we know there's at least one boy. 
So we don't need to worry about the coefficient because the coefficient is one. So if I wanted to, I could, I could write that down here. I could say, okay, there's one. And I can still say the same thing. So if I said, okay, there's one molecule. It's a big molecule, but there's one molecule. I can start with the carbon. And I could say that if I start with this one coefficient, if I start with my one coefficient and I times it by six, that means one times six. And one times six is six. So if I just count, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six carbons. And again, I just place them back on the product side. And now I'm looking for the hydrogens. And again, the hydrogens, and these are smaller than the other ones, but the hydrogens are these little kind of gray looking pieces. So if I want to count those, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And again, I'm going to record that data as a twelve. Remember, there's this one that's sitting in front here. So I could have easily just said one times 12. Now we have the last one, which is oxygen. And oxygen says there's, there's a six subscript. And again, we're times in a by the one coefficient, but there's nothing in front, so we know it's a one. So one times six, one times six is six. So we count them one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, we put the six on our, on our record the six on our information, our table. Now we're gonna go again, a little bit further to the right. And it says there's gonna be six O2s. Six O2s, so that means there's six of these molecules, but we're only counting atoms. We're not calling, counting molecules. Remember, a molecule is two or more atoms. So these are two atoms. And that makes a molecule. So we're going to count the 602. The, the subscript is a 2. And the coefficient is 6. So 6 times 2. And what's 6 times 2? Okay, we can go ahead and we can count these. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so we take that twelve, record it where the oxygen is. We add those two together, so six plus twelve equals eighteen. So is this balanced? Do we conserve the mass? Remember, conserving mass means that, or the conservation of mass means that the, the each atom equals the other side because whatever comes on the reactant side must show up on the product side because in a closed reaction no atoms can be created no atoms can be destroyed and in this case we have we have the carbon has six on the reactant side six on the product side so that one's good the oxygen Again, we have 18 on one side and 18 on the other side. So those are equal. And on the hydrogen, again, we have eight, 12 on one side and 12 on the product side. So therefore, each one of the items, the elements, equals nothing was created, nothing was destroyed. Whatever was on the, whatever was on the reactant side is on the product side. So again, these are balanced. And that's what that means. So we have C6O18, H12, so they balance. So let's talk about this chemical formula. And let's talk about what happens. So we're talking about photosynthesis now. So in photosynthesis, we we exhale, oh we have okay, so we exhale oxygen or carbon dioxide, excuse me, we car exhale carbon dioxide. So and what happens with that carbon dioxide 
is it actually goes to the tree or to a plant. So plants need that carbon dioxide. So we exhale, the tree is happy to, to take it. So we again, we exhale, we exhale six carbon dioxides. When we exhale, what do we exhale? We exhale carbon dioxide, we exhale water. But sometimes I've had this water coming down like rain. So there's rain water there, and this is being exhaled. But either way, it gets carbon dioxide. It uses those six carbon dioxide and it makes a sugar. When you make the when it makes a sugar, it actually makes the plant bigger because that's the food for the for the tree to eat. And then it takes that CO2 and it makes oxygen. And it gives us the oxygen and we inhale the oxygen. And then we also eat the plant eventually and we use that sugar from the plant, the C6H12O6. If we don't, and it's like a tree, then the tree gets bigger with that sugar. We're gonna finish this slideshow of photosynthesis to, to explain a little bit about how we have the carbon cycle in the in our Earth's atmosphere. So let's say, for instance, we have the car, we're driving the car, and the car has some type of uh, exhaust, and the exhaust is carbon dioxide. And when it has this carbon dioxide, where does this carbon dioxide go? It goes into the air, and hopefully it'll get, it will be lost into a tree, and a tree is able to absorb it. We also have factories that have carbon dioxide. We have planes that have carbon dioxide. All this carbon is in the air, and hopefully we can get these get plants and trees and all these uh, plant organisms that can absorb all the carbon dioxide instead of having it out in the air because we can have so much carbon dioxide in the air but after a while it becomes a problem. So hopefully this helps out and I hope you understand more about how to balance equations and how photosynthesis works.